Everybody, this is your inspirational nurse T. Era coming to you live with another great video. I am your inspirational R. N. T. Era, and I just want to say happy holidays for those who do celebrate and for those who do not. I just want to say thank you for all the support. Today's video is going to be by viewer's choice, and I know it's long overdue, but it's my top 10 red flags of a nursing home. Oh, I'm going to spill the juice on this one. I have so much long-term care, acute care, skilled nursing unit experience ever since I've been an OPN nurse, which I was an OPN nurse for over four years, and then the rest of my career, I was a RN, now RNBSN. And let me tell you guys, currently I'm working in the ICU, so I can tell you a little bit about long-term care because guys, I not only was a floor nurse, but also I was in management tons of times in nursing homes, so I can tell you. So let's just start with number one. My number one red flag of a nursing home will be your high turnover. Now, normally, sometimes this can become public if you go and review, look at the reviews of the facility, guys, and you see that they will put that there, like maybe angry staff members that just left, or management, formal management, or whoever used to be in that building, we sometimes put this in their reviews. So it's good to go and check out the reviews before you start to actually do an interview of the facility. You want to get the whole tea, guys, and people do talk. Usually nursing homes is in certain communities that if you walk, if you talk to certain people in that community, they know about that facility. They may not never go in it, but they do know about the facility and they know that they have a really high turnover problem. Usually that indicates that there's a problem with keeping people maybe there's something that's spooking them maybe there's something that's really huge happening maybe something that the facility does want people to know publicly and people is not willing to risk their license which i understand totally y'all already know i support that too is when you pull up to the nursing home and the grass is overgrown the weeds is overgrown looks like it hasn't been cut in so long maybe the structure of the building is falling apart that means that the administrator is not able to perform their duties to ensure that it's a safe environment because the administration job is very important it's just like a husband and wife right they own a home maybe the wife is the one that will remind the husband like hey don't forget to fix the leaking pipe or hire somebody to fix the leaking pipe and the husband's job is to make sure that the home is safe so they will be the ones to make sure the work gets done quality work gets done to the house it's kind of like the same thing if you're trying to get this thing wrapped around your brain Three, I would say a red flag would be the ranking. Now, this one you have to watch. Now, I did not discuss this with y'all, but since I've been in the back seat before as far as management, I know that there's CMS guidelines that allows nursing homes and is categorized by staffing and other things. That's how they get points to rank their facility. But most facility guys are really just one stars and they look like they're three stars and they be manipulating this thing. The guidelines and the, the category, the, the way that is set up, I think needs to be updated and changed to based off today's practice and the needs of the patient, right? And the standards need to be changed, right? Always, there needs to be an influence in standards. I would say number four, guys, the vibes. If you pull up or you're touring a facility, maybe you're thinking about working there and the vibes are so weird. Maybe all of a sudden in the hallways, they were all talking to each other and now all the staff is staring at you and they kind of giving you this look and they're trying to let you know through nonverbal communication and saying you need to run or you need to get out of here or, you know, like get out. It's not safe or something. But the vibes are definitely off. You're like, man, everybody was just chilling. Now all the patients are hiding somewhere. The staff are all hiding in the bathroom whispering. So the vibes, pay attention to that because that's always a red flag, right? So always pay attention to the vibes. Another red flag is the supply room. Now, if you ever tour the facility, this is one of the places that I love to see. I want to see if the facility has what the patient needs. Now, they don't have to have every little thing. Let's get it straight. But the basics, can I do a bed bath? Do I have a washcloth? Do I have a towel? Do I have soap? <laughs> I hate to do this, but I've been in nursing homes where this was non-existent. Patients didn't have these basic things. I'm not looking for a hospital supply room. I'm looking for if I need to brush the teeth of my patient. Do I have a toothbrush? Right? These are the things that are essential to patient care in a nursing home. And this is important to look for the basics. Do I have a basin? Do I have soap? Now, moving forward, guys, because you know we got to move forward on this one. A red flag would be the bullets and boards are not updated. You do not know how to contact state if there is a state-related issue 
or really something that is state related that state need to come and do their surveys and, and really investigate um you need there should be always a bulletin board in a nursing home usually they keep this in the back of the hall like the very back of the building but it's always updated with your new staff like your new administrator your new don your new adon it has their how to contact them it has patients rights it has staff rights what to do in certain situations their policies and guidelines are on this bulletin board maybe they use a a wall and they update the wall with all the papers this is so important because if something state related is going on everybody's job in that building is to report now have i ever report i have before yes i have because it was a state related issue now I, if there's something that can be addressed with with the chain of command with following the facility policies and you can go through that and deal with it that way then yeah but if it's not and it's really extremely dangerous situation like i said i share my experience on during the summertime with like black mode and like people weren't getting sick like staff was it i mean it was out of there it was bad so um there's always a board where you should be able to see all the facilities information right staff can go back there usually they try to put it where the patient the staff checks in at and do their badge to badge in this is always a really good place to put it because then it's visible. And this is something, even if you're starting your own business, guys, you have to have a the similar um, wall of information because the state, whatever state you're registering your business through, they're going to tell you you have to pay a small fee and then they'll send you like the posters and the papers and everything that they want visible. So when they're surveying your business, whether whatever type of home business you might have with patients, they want to see this. So this is extremely important to everyone in this situation. Let's talk about another red flag. Another red flag would be dietary. So there's a lot of dietary issues, um, whether patients are taking pictures of their food. And it's, I mean, it's non-edible food being served, right? And there's high turnover in dietary. Now, even though your role may be in nursing and clinical side, it's so important to know what's going on in the whole building. That's why I always promote when they have their first, first meeting in the morning when it's with everybody to participate because you need to know what is going on in other departments and how can this influence me, right? This this is going to influence everybody because your patients is eating this. And if you have patients with wounds maybe, and they're not getting a proper diet, right? They have risk for aspirating and, and choking and dying. Like this can be very fatal. Um, another red flag, guys, that I found um, in a nursing home is that they don't have a diabetic diet. Now, this is something that's kind of out of their control just because of how the guidelines and standards are for most nursing homes, which I feel like a lot of this stuff needs to be updated. And it's so annoying when you work and they're under these old, old guidelines and things like that. If you look at their, their policies and procedures, right? And they don't have specific like diets especially for diabetics but they have so many diabetics right they're serving them syrup they're serving them like sugary things and they don't have options they don't have alternatives so i was promoting for them to have alternatives for diabetics so we'll have sandwiches or something else like if their sugar drop we'll have a, a you know a special place to go in the kitchen everybody knew where to go to give it to them like simple things right if you see, here's another red flags. If you see other people in other departments working in other departments, so you may have someone in the kitchen, all of a sudden a CNA or a CNA, all of a sudden a secretary. The secretary all of a sudden is maintenance. Maintenance is all of a sudden. That is a huge red flag that there's a staffing issue. And these people are being cr not even probably cross trained, but asked to do a favor for the company to say, hey, can you do you mind like holding the desk down while you're doing your job? Do you mind? And this is where the most frustrations come from because most people mentally prepare to work. They mentally prepare to come in and work a long, hard day, and then you're adding to their 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 responsibilities. Unless there's people there that says, hey, I'm, I want to cross train and work in clinical. I never worked in clinical before. Is there any way that I can do that? And then you set those goals with those people and get them cross trained. But the ones that would that doesn't know that this is happening and then they're just thrown into a situation where people are working in areas they never worked 
Once you take on other people's roles and responsibility, you are responsible. The company likes to fall back when it comes to holding things accountable. They will blame the staff, definitely. If you come into a facility, here's another red flag, and there's a lot of travel nurses, right? People on contracts. They're not permanently there. That is also a red flag because that means something is going on with retaining staff. Now, retaining staff is always going to be a challenge, but it's also how you treat your staff. If you have someone that really is passionate about working in long-term care and they really, really want to get this roll down pack, really, really retrain them. Don't say, well, when I get the time, I'm going to show you one thing at a time. They need the information so they can be, you don't know that these might be the people that would be there for years, but because they're not given that and they are set up to fail in the very beginning, they have a very bad first impression of their role and they really think they failed at this. Because that's what when healthcare people do. We blame ourselves, right? We blame ourselves because we're like, even though we don't, even, we didn't get trained and we didn't get the, the the facility never met their expectations. Your expectations, you're still like, it's on me. I should have did something more. I I could have tried. I could have researched online. You should never have to go use outside sources to be trained. That is a red flag. Is when staff is not trained to do their job, or you're told things that you're. That yeah, we're gonna teach you that, and it's never done. There's never, there's never a date set. There's never like, hey, we're gonna send y'all out. If you're having problems with training and you can't do it within the facility, network with other facilities that might be really good at training. You might have a nursing home that's like five blocks away that you can send your staff, even though it's a little embarrassing. But you can send them there and say, hey, I have a really, I know some good nurses over there that can train you in the skilled nursing unit. I really want you to get underneath her wing. I really want you to get underneath his wing. He's really good at charting. So maybe you have to, you have to get to that point where it's like use and network, right? Network with people, right? And again, another red flag would be the reviews. If you come up on a, a facility or you talk to people in that community and it's all the same language, meaning everyone is like, oh, don't go there. It's disgusting. Like, it's falling apart. Everybody's leaving. There's tons of changes. Every time I turn around in administration or management, every time I turn around, there's a, every week, every day or every week, there's a new administrator, there's a new DON. That is a big red flag, very big red flag. Now, you will meet people that are very dedicated. Once they start a job, they like to stick in there. And there are certain generations that I know we have different generations, depending on your age, that they're very loyal and they will stick it in, but they're not satisfied. They feel betrayed. They feel like slaves. Pretty much they're working for, for nothing. They're not getting what they were promised, right? So there's a lot of broken hearts. And I've been in buildings where the hearts are all broken and it's so sad, right? Another red flag would be seeing patients just just moving around on their own. There's no activities. There's nothing stimulating them. There's nothing that they're doing. There's no, no curriculum of as far as the activities department with keeping them active and keeping them busy. And, you know, I've been to certain nursing homes where they're really good in this area and some nursing homes where it's non-existent. They have no activities director. They have nobody to come in and to read to them or... Um, to, to help play games with them. You know, these patients are not dead. They might be old, but they're not dead. They're full of life and they're spicy. And I met a lot of them that are like, their personalities is huge and they deserve to be like if they're home. They, they do things that like when they're home, right? So there's so many red flags that you're going to see going into a nursing home facility. Another one is, right, then you come into the nursing home facility and no one knows their job. <laughs> it's like you go in and people are like, I think you're supposed to go over there. I think that's the unit or hmm, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just just going to do this task because I don't know nothing else. No one else came out and greet me. I have worked in places where I've worked in nursing homes where um, the management was non-existent. Staff was just like lost and clueless. And even as a traveler coming in, it's just, they're just like, mm, I don't know. I don't even know when the woman nurse comes. I don't know anything about this facility. That is not good. Even if you have a traveler, you want to always greet your travelers coming in and just say, hey, just be mindful that this door locks at a certain time. You want to use this code. You want to push this, this door in more because then it will pop open. You want to watch out for Miss Mary because she's going to throw this at you. 
something you want to give them a glimpse of how their day may go it's going to set the tone and expectations for them to say okay i can i can overcome those challenges but if you just throwing them out there and you're not training your staff that's a big red flag when staff is definitely not being trained again i can't stand coming to a facility and you see people the next day on the floor working you're like whoa if you stop that employee and ask the employee anything about the standards of that facility, the expectations, they would not, They all they can sell you was, yep, I signed up yesterday and they put me on the floor today to be with so-and-so. But where's the standards and the expectations was it ever set, right? So leadership is very important in a nursing home. I feel like it needs some type of structure and standards and everything like that. Um, another thing is patients, belongings go missing and staff belongings go missing. So there's a lot of people stealing because most of the time too, staff feel like they're not getting paid the fair salary or what they're supposed to be getting. So things started to go missing. I remember going to nursing homes and automatically people were like, yo, hide your belongings, hide your stuff, hide. And it's sad, but it's the truth. And their stuff goes missing. Patients missing money. And then, you know, I've been a deal with and I've been in those positions where we have to investigate and try to figure out well, where the money went. If they if they put it somewhere they don't remember. And, you know, even if you have cameras, it's not everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But things go missing. People are stealing. That is a big red flag. Right? Big red flag. Another red flag is when is the last time you saw a fire drill happening or some type of drill if a patient goes missing? Have they went over that with you? PPE, hand washing, those are your main things when you are hired into a facility is those four main trainings. If the patient goes missing, what is the first step? Who do we notify? What do we say to the next staff, the next unit? How do we how do we maintain that in house so that it doesn't become a public issue and cops show at the door? Because I remember working somewhere and the patient was like at somebody's house chilling, and um, I worked somewhere also where patients were allowed to be free, and they didn't when they came back in they wasn't being assessed, the skin wasn't being assessed, they wasn't being assessed for uh, outside drugs or any recreational things. They just was allowed right back in. It was just like very strange because those are the things you want to watch. You are responsible. Another thing is death that is caused by the facility, but it's being covered up. Um, this is very serious because I know that things do occur. And a lot of times, I remember I had one nursing home ask me to alter my charting at one point, And I was like, no. And I remember telling the deal when I will not be altering any of my, my documentation and it will be locked. You would not be able to alter or change my words is what it is. And I made sure I documented it accordingly. And of course, you know, use the right quotation marks and everything that was occurring. But they asked me not to place, like not to say anything at all or to change it. Can they change it or whatever? No. Another red flag is seeing a lot of death. So like if you notice that at least two to three patients die a day or like every other day, then there's something that's going on. The quality obviously is not happening. Patients are dying. The main thing you could do if you're already in management, you can look and see if the deaths are related. Like, or are they all dying from sepsis? Are they all dying from a specific disease, virus or whatever? Because then you need to pay attention to that clinical practice for that thing that is happening, right? And get in control of it. Right, another, mm, 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 mm. another red flag is solicitation. So you have weird people hanging outside of the nursing home, like it's a corner store, just standing around, weird looking people, just, you don't know who they are. Um, you know, you're like, mm, I don't know that person. You know, these people are just hanging around, like, and then when patients come out, they just hang with them and talking to them. And you're like, who is these people? Like, so I pay attention to everything. Solicitation shouldn't be happening. It's a place of business. We're not a corner store. We're not the hood. You know, well, some places are, but <laughs> y'all help me out here. Help me out. But there's so many red flags. The language when you, when there's an issue and you bring it up and you follow the exact chain of command, the language that is spoken to you, is it scripted? Does it sound like something that someone scripted for the management to respond in that language? Meaning they're not 
There's, they're not like able to be like, well, yeah, according to the policy, da, da, da. it's so scripted that it just sounds like fake. Like, you know, that they can't talk to you, like, you know, in that manner. Like they're, they in it's, it's, I don't know if y'all been in that situation before, but it's just like when you talk to them and they're like, well, did you read? Da, 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 instead of just helping you. Like some things you can just uh, talk to an employee and it's resolved, literally. Another red flag is definitely mold. Now, if you see a mold visibly, like all over the place, like black mold is a big red flag. That means that is something that's been brewing for a while and it's been there and it's very toxic. You do not want to breathe that in. Um, you do want to watch that. Now, if you do start touring a nursing home, the fun part of that is that um, you will know which your first tour if that facility is for you. That is the best thing you can do when you are deciding if you want to go into long-term care. Now, no long-term care is perfect. And I've been to some places that I give them an A plus. Not even, no, nah, maybe A minus. But there's some places that's somewhat decent. There's some places that are nowhere near decent. And um, you also want to watch the patients. Like some patients, you just see them just smoking anywhere. They're just flicking cigarettes everywhere. Um, you know, it's no standards. They're not... There's no respect for the team that's there caring for them, right? There's because some places you go, the team has a really good relationship with their with their patients, which I love when I go some places. It's like home. So the patients feel safe going to certain staff members and talking and and saying, Hey, I want to do bingo. Hey, why can't we do this? Or hey, can we do that? You know? And red flag, you always gonna have one evil patient or more than one evil patient in the building i don't know what is wrong with mrs so-and-so as an example miss clarence but the evilness it don't matter what you do or what you say to that patient is it's just like pure evil like they will just try to destroy every good thing in you like they will just oh i have seen some nasty things being said to staff and people just being in the in the facility by um, by the, you know, just being there visiting. This is also because patients are frustrated with their environment, their conditions, their food, their, their quality of life. And so that's why they created the, um, group where their government kind of group where you have a leader and the patients all discuss their issues with management and management duties is to ensure that they participate. And this also has to, it's going to be asked during survey. Did you participate? Did you know, did you, how did you resolve the issue that the patients said that they're having? Like, what did we do? They're always going to ask you during a state survey. What did y'all do? So if y'all see some of these red flags, red flags are going to be different per facility, per I would say location of facility, types of patients they have. Some facilities just take anything. It's so important for a facility to really, really, really observe and assess patients coming from the hospital and not just take them because they're the corporate type of facility where they have to get uh, admissions in order to meet their quota for their money, like getting their money. Be because this becomes a money-driven business where it's like, okay, the, the higher the number, the greater we're doing. No, it's about the quality of care that we can provide. Because once you start providing quality care, you don't have to worry about your numbers. People talk, patients talk, and they will be like, girl, I had such a great experience at at uh, Long, Long Rich State uh, Nursing Home. And they talk. If you want to build your business in nursing home, you need to provide the quality, not so much getting the numbers up. Because giving the numbers up don't mean nothing. If the patients leave, let's say within the 24 hours, they wind up back at the hospital or they just leave and like, this is disgusting. This is just like, I, I can't stay here. The, the facility doesn't even get make money off of that admission because the person left within 24 hours. They left. So now the facility gets mad at the staff because they're like, well, what are y'all doing? And why are these why is these patients leaving instead of providing the quality of care as a team? The focus is on the wrong things, I think, in nursing homes. And, and also, I know there's a lot of pressure when you have a business and you're just trying to keep the business because you want to keep people working. But sometimes you have to do what you have to do to make sure your mission is being met. 
right? Your mission is being that. Another red flag, guys, is seeing staff come in with different other work, clothing on. I have seen this so many times. You go walk around and you like, I didn't know you work at that hospital or work at the other nursing home. They have other nursing home IDs on or don't have IDs at all or other scrub colors that the facility doesn't wear. And you're like, don't know who is what or what. That is very unsafe. Very, 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 very unsafe. And yeah. Um, so yeah. That's all I got to say about that. Now, y'all comment below some of these red flags y'all could agree on. Or maybe there's another one. You're like, girl, you didn't say this one. I know there's like so many red flags out there for nursing homes and long-term care facilities. Again, they're not all equal. There's some out there that 50% of it is doing great. The other 50 is like they have to work on. Um, unfortunately, I think part of it is you just got to use what you got to create something that works so if you don't have a lot of staff but you have ones that are dedicated you need to appreciate those people and not take advantage of them because that's not right mm. it's definitely not right when you take advantage especially your senior and your senior employees that's been with the company and dedicate themselves to you now the new generation is not going to be playing around with that new generation nursing and healthcare is like we're not, we're not, we're not doing this. <laughs> One thing about, I love about the new nurses and new healthcare workers is like, they know BS when they see it and they like, nope. And the old school people are like, feel like they're stuck and like, it's sad seeing them because they're like so dissatisfied. They don't feel filled. They don't feel fulfilled. And as a healthcare worker, the one thing you want to do is feel satisfied, fulfilled. When you leave work, you're like, I helped someone today. I felt fulfilled. I got to I got to practice this skill today. I felt fulfilled. You're fulfilling a need for that worker and that worker is going to stay. So even if that worker is not getting the right salary, they're okay with that because they know that where they are, they're able to grow and, and practice things and skills and provide that quality care, right? Another thing, you see a lot of change in your nurse practitioners. Usually nurse practitioners are uh the they are the providers for nursing homes and you'll see a lot of turnover with them next thing you see another nurse practitioner next week you'll be like yo what happened to so and so she gone he gone you know that is also a red flag another red flag is all the equipment is not working you got one lift you got probably five diapers like or you have like the equipment is just not there they don't have any uh you know the thing to get the job done right? That is the red flag. Another red flag is um, when they're being brought in, that introduction, when they're, when the family is visiting for the first time and the patient is, is thinking about it coming in, they're not given anything. I miss nursing homes that used to give the patients a welcome package, a gift, a something to make them feel part of the family. And like, look, this is what we do for fun on Friday. Saturday is taco day or whatever y'all do that's unique to your facility. I don't see that much. And I was trying to get back to those points of um, starting to like make baskets. I even talked to my, the girl that was in billing and she was like, hey, I'm good at that. I'm I'm like, we need to make more gifts to give to our new people coming in. Like, we want to feel, want them to feel welcome. Another red flag is your linen. If you work in a facility and there's no sheets and pillowcases and blankets and they're all like MIA, that is a big red flag. Especially, it causes the most fights in nursing homes is when the linen goes missing or it's like filthy, it's not being cleaned. It starts the biggest arguments. I have seen multiple arguments over this subject. Linen. It's crazy. But I understand how important linen is to everyone in that building. So watch it when it comes to that. So hopefully these, what, over 10 red flags help you decide if long-term care is for you. Um, comment below if you agree to some of the things that I'm saying or if I'm missing something, please correct me. I am open to change and I appreciate it. Happy holidays to you guys and you guys. Merry Christmas.